This is To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. Tomorrow, March 1st, marks one year since the first two cases of COVID-19 were reported in Florida. The case count, 12 long months later, hovering at 1.9 million. In our five-county area, you see for yourself the numbers. A snapshot taken just days ago. Each case, each death, an intensely personal story of love and loss. Each recovery, a reason for hope. My guest this morning, Palm Beach County Mayor Dave Kerner, and it would be fair to say, Mayor, you, like every elected official, have been consumed by dealing with COVID for the past year. First, sir, thank you for your time. Your overview of where we are, where we've been, and I guess most importantly, where we're going. Well, thank you for having me on the show, Michael, and thank you to your viewers for being engaged on such an important and impactful issue. We are coming up on the one-year mark, as you've noted, and it's been, it's been a difficult road for this community, for this county, um, for the five area, five county area that your viewers are watching from throughout the United States and the world. And, uh, you know, we have a lot to be proud of in Palm Beach County. I am the county mayor of Palm Beach, and so I focus on that jurisdiction. But I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be candid with you and your viewers if, if I didn't take a moment and say that we've lost a lot of people in this county and, and over 500,000 in, in this great nation of ours. And so it's taken a toll um, beyond belief and measure. Be specific about where we are right now, where we're going in terms of vaccinations. In, in terms of vaccinations and where we are at, generally I can tell you that this county has fared very well uh, throughout the, the duration of this pandemic from a relative perspective. We got our school system open first in South Florida. We got phase one open first, our phase two open first. And by first, I mean between Broward, Miami, Dade, uh, and our county, which were the three counties that were essentially shut down or locked down by the governor. And since that time, this county has rallied. We have adopted a mask ordinance. Our, our people are wearing the mask, even if that ordinance wasn't in place. I think you'd see widespread use of it, uh, regardless, because it's an effective mitigation strategy. When it comes to vaccinations, which I know is on everybody's mind as it should be, uh, we're faring very, very well. We're number two in the state, even though we're number three in population. We're just behind Miami-Dade County, and we're about, I think the, the current statistics, I want to be precise, Michael, 407,084 doses have been administered in our county, and it's been a Herculean effort by everyone involved, specifically the members of this community that have been so laser-focused on mitigating the effects of COVID-19. Uh, at midweek last week, and we'll talk more about vaccinations, uh, you've had to talk to families. We've had more than 2,400 deaths uh, because of COVID in Palm Beach County. Uh, I know you and your colleagues have met, talked to, uh, consoled, been so concerned over the past year. What, what do you say to those families this day as we are on this one year anniversary? Well, I don't know that there's anything that I can say to the families to give them any amount of uh, closure or, or uh, feeling of empathy from me. I, I do empathize with every person and every life that has been lost. And it's a reminder of, of just how quickly things can change in life. It's a reminder that our family is our family and our friends are our friends and we love them and to not waste any time in this life because you can wake up tomorrow and tomorrow's never guaranteed though. Mr. Mayor, where are we in terms of doing more to serve underserved communities in Palm Beach County? You know full well, as do all our elected leaders, about concerns, especially in some of our Western communities where they say, we don't have a pharmacy nearby, we don't have easy transportation, we don't have internet access. Where are we, what are you pushing for specifically to make sure that we're continuing to open and expand access to those who don't have easy access to begin with? Well, that's a great question, and, and, and the politics and, and the equity and the equality of health care is a difficult thing, but it's, it's the, the, the inequities are real, and I know that this governor, Governor DeSantis, has focused on trying to cure some of those issues in our county. I know that my, my colleagues on the Board of County Commissioners have been very uh, direct and very forward about the concerns that they have. I can tell you that from my perspective, the governor who is really the official charge with making those decisions, we can advocate, but the governor's office is really the, the officer in charge of those decisions. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of where we're at. I'm proud of, of the resiliency of this community and the communities that have been underserved to speak out and speak up, but also at the same time, have the patience that's required to have the supply chains open up 
And I think in turn, you've seen both the, the communities that have been underserved become more open to looking at the vaccine as a viable option because there have been some concerns about that, whether it's something that's trustworthy or not. And then also that the government cares about, and when I talk about government, I mean state and local government, that we care deeply about making sure that each and every person in this community gets served in a timely way. Are there any specifics you'd like to point out to the Palm Beach County constituency? And of course, a lot of this will ring true across our five counties, though of course you speak with your Palm Beach County mayor hat, but issues of distribution availability are something that to all our audience ring true. But for Palm Beach County, any specifics you wanna to point to your constituents about in terms of what you're seeing or what's over the near horizon in terms of speeding up vaccine availability and distribution into all? communities with a particular focus on underserved ones? Well, we've done some unique things within, within our limited powers in this county in terms of focusing on not just those underserved communities, but for example, the county commission voted to uh, make sure that those seniors 65 and plus that work for the school district were given priority. I'm turning my attention to law enforcement officers next. Obviously we got our firefighters and first responders done very quickly. And the supply chains are opening up. I've, I've watched with great interest uh, during the presidential transition and how that would affect the supply chain. Uh, and this isn't a back and forth about politics, about who's a better president or not. It's just a function of time and, and the supply chains opening up. And uh, President Biden has been very forceful about getting a larger supply uh, to, into the United States. And then I think that's, that's pretty apparent. And so I think over the horizon, as you say, we should be in a place where, listen, we're at 400 or about 280,000 seniors in this county have already been vaccinated fully. Um, that's about, I think, well over 60% of those that wanted it. And so we have a ways to go when it comes to our senior population. But I think when we look over the horizon, the general population is next. And, and that's an exciting concept for, for everybody in this country. The governor has said come early March, he hopes to begin moving the age back, whether it'll be to 60 or 55, not quite clear yet. As you look back over the last year, talk about criticisms and missteps. So there's been a lot of critique of the governor about not allowing localities to have enough latitude to enforce mask mandates and the like. Has that been a frustration specifically for you as you look back over what we could have done differently or better? Well, I'll be the first to say that I, I hope that we never have to use the lessons that we learn from, a, from this pandemic in the future. Uh, hope springs eternal. One thing that I'll tell you that's been difficult for me as, as the lead of the effort here locally uh, and, and both nationally as well is sort of the discourse and dialogue and how that occurs in our nation at this time. And I don't know if it's necessarily social media or it's, it's a running to the margins of each side and an ideological perspective. I haven't been able to figure it out exactly, but certainly criticism flows on a daily basis. And, and that's something that elected officials like myself need to be open and cognizant of. And certainly we have a lot to learn and certainly mistakes were made. But I can tell you that from my perspective, and I'm, I'm a Democrat in a, in a Democratic county um, that has no incentive but a moral one to, to commend the Republican governor on his service, but I'm going to do that because I can tell you that whether you agree with his, his policy decisions or not, he's been laser focused on assisting this county, uh, which is very important to me and the state as a whole. And I've seen him work firsthand. And I can tell you that when I've needed those authority and, and that, that power or um, ability to regulate businesses or regulate conduct, which is not something that we aim to do, He's always been there for this county in terms of finding that right balance. And I'll tell you that uh, I, I've, I'm, I'm happy to admit that when I look back over the course of the time throughout this pandemic, really in that initial stage where there was so much fear and so much fright and so much uncertainty about the economy uh, and the confluence with public health and how do we properly regulate those two in terms of shutdowns and curfews and all those things that wreak havoc on businesses, I have been impressed with how the governor has handled those those issues, uh, because I think we fair, have fared very well, both as an economy and from a public health perspective, in finding that right balance. When you look throughout the United States, and this is not to uh, cast shadows over anyone else's leadership, but there are states and there are large, large communities like ours that have really struggled in a different and more impactful way, not to diminish anything we've gone through. Mr. Uh, but I felt like we did everything that we could to strike that right balance. But there's, of course, there's lessons learned and, and I'll, I'm happy to be candid about that. 
Mr. Mayor, uh, biggest uh, lesson that will be your takeaway and biggest message to your constituency. We have spring break coming up. There's concern about that becoming a spreader event. Uh, what's your fundamental message to people? We're not through with this yet. So what's your message about masks and social distancing and any concerns about spring break? I have to ask you to kind of wrap it up in 30 to 45. Sure, and I'll get that done. First of all, as a county mayor, I have to reiterate what I've done for a year straight, which is please wear your mask, be, be cognizant and caring of your neighbors and your friends. But I think, Michael, at this point, um, the impacts of COVID-19 have been so severe uh, throughout this nation that people are very cognizant of what their actions are and, and what the impacts will be if you're not careful. So I, I will just wrap it up by saying I've been very proud of this county and its residents and how they have rallied and responded to COVID-19, their neighbors and their friends. And so just keep doing what you're doing and, and patience is a virtue and, and we will continue to do everything we can to be an effective unit of government for this county where I was, I've been born and raised and I'm proud to serve. And briefly, you urge everybody to get their vaccine. I personally do, absolutely. I'm not a doctor. I haven't vaccinated myself. I'm not within that category or age group, but certainly when, when my time comes, I, I will be excited to do it. Mr. Mayor, we thank you for your perspective on this sad one year anniversary, but one where we'll be seeking a lot of perspective. We appreciate yours. We'll look forward to talking to you as we continue to uh, develop and work on this story, a story that will be unfolding for a long time to come. Mayor Dave Kerner, thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. And our roundtable talks COVID politics, a flag flap and voter reform next.